this last week I've been taking time just to get used to a different work environment and this particular space at home here in Yorkshire. The desk I've got here, I had forgotten how much I'd missed it. Basically, it's a pine door from an old garden shed that we had in a different property. I've always liked it and I've had it as a desk in a writing studio in the garden. But when I got home to Yorkshire the week before last, I thought I need a bigger desk than the space I had in my room upstairs. So I've taken this from storage and I've set it out as my writing desk for the next few months. I absolutely love it and it's a great place to be. As long as I've got some regular coffee and I've got a stack of pens and pencils, I'm good to go. Being back here has allowed me to connect again with friends I haven't seen for six months, to chat with neighbours who obviously I've kept in touch with in terms of them helping me look after the house. But it's been brilliant to be back in the local town and to see things from a fresh perspective, not a new perspective, but the things we take for granted sometimes. I've been able to look at them again in a different way and with fresh eyes. One of the amazing things that's occurred this week is I went to the local library in Bradford. It's a 10 minute walk from the house down into the town centre and I picked up this particular book by A. A. Dand. It's a brilliant book, it's called One Way Out. And in the background you can see the fairly traditional thriller cover image of a figure walking away with his back to us. And ahead of him is an image of the town hall in Bradford. Without breaking any plot stories, what's great about this story is it's based in the neighbourhood where I live. The buildings are familiar. The mosques, the coffee shops, the town centre, the mirror pool that the local authority have built as a little bit of a focal point for the city centre. It's a brilliant book and I'm really excited to be reading it. I'm only two days in, but I'm already two thirds of the way through the book and looking forward to finishing it probably tonight or tomorrow. That's One Way Out by A. A. Dand. But going to the library has been productive for me as a place to work. I went there with my laptop on Friday last week and just started experimenting with the use of ChatGPT to give me some ideas for a new book. Oh, I needed that. I experimented with some AI called Claude.ai and it's a very good package I signed up for the professional version, which was a few dollars a month. I wanted to have the ability to use AI to help me with some ideas for some other books. I gave it a prompt and said, look, these are my interests and my hobbies and the things that I'm passionate about, and also that I've got experience in. Can you suggest to me a dozen book titles with potential subtitles? using one or perhaps a combination of two of those hobbies and levels of experience. And within two minutes, I had a dozen really quite good ideas about book titles and subtitles that would tie in with my work and my experience as a small residential landlord, as an investor, as a writer, as a person who loves YouTube, and I've taken one of those ideas and over the next four days, I've put it through the AI program to see what it will come up with and to look at ways that those ideas can be turned into a story. And my next prompt was to say to the AI program, can you give me an outline of 12 chapters? My next prompt was to say, give me three subtopics to go in each of the 12 chapters. So potentially giving me 36 mini themes to be covered within the topic of this, another non-fiction book, and to give me then the opportunity to go away and write maybe 500 to 800 words on each of those subtopics. That potentially would give me up to two and a half thousand words per chapter, or about 30,000 or just under 30,000 words for a new non-fiction book, which I can upload to various platforms later or at the end of the month. So that's been an incredibly exciting process for me. And I'm now on day six of writing with AI 
and adding prompts and changing those prompts and then going back to the program and saying this is good but I think the tone is wrong or I'd like it to be written in a more friendly and positive tone of voice so that the reader will be encouraged to keep learning as they move through the subtopics and of course the chapters. Let's see where that goes. It is exciting. I've got a manuscript to take with me to the coffee shop later today, just on the outlines, to put down my bullet points, what I think needs to go into and underneath each of the sub themes. And I'm looking forward to moving that project forward as we move through this month of May. For those of you who are familiar with this little wrist bag that I use, it's been incredibly valuable, literally planning the trip, working on the plane and I've been using it every day since. In terms of the notes here, two days ago I went into the city of Leeds which is the much larger neighbour to Bradford and I went to my, I say my library, I went to the library that I am a member of, it's called the Leeds Library. It's the oldest surviving subscription library in England having been founded in the 1700s. It's a great place to work, it's a place where I always feel at home getting off the train into Leeds, walking through the Trinity Centre shopping plaza and into the library, I know that I am at a place where I feel happy and relaxed and productive. You will have places like this, but where are they? Do you have a local library that you love, a coffee shop, perhaps an art gallery with work tables that you can use, an environment where you can be productive you can take your notebooks, you can take your keyboard and work on something that's important to you and get things done because they matter. The Leeds Library is one of my places while I'm here in Yorkshire and I absolutely love it. On a browse of the shelves, I came across this book. It's called Hunted Down, The Detective Stories of Charles Dickens. I picked it up, I read the jacket cover and I knew I had to bring this one home to work through this week before I'm back at the library on Monday. Charles Dickens was a pioneer of detective fiction and Hunter Down assembles a fascinating selection of his work in which the men of the law make their mark. Their working methods were based on his observations of the fledgling police detective force when he was a solicitor's clerk and reporter and witnessed the workings of the police stations and accompanied detectives on their nightly street patrols in London. He also attended magistrates' courts and was present at murder trials and public executions. Out of these observations grew Mr. Nadgett in Martin Chuzzlewit and Inspector Bucket in Bleak House, who solves the murder of an unscrupulous lawyer. The assorted cast includes an amateur detective, a river policeman, and the prototype of all undercover detectives. This is going to be a great read. It ties in with my general interests in crime fiction. And maybe, just maybe, there will be another idea that turns up from an aspect of what I read here, what I learn within the pages of this book, and that may make its place into something else that I'm working on currently. Hunted Down, The Detective Stories of Charles Dickens. Less than two weeks ago, I was in the library in the centre of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, and if you've never been through that airport, it is a stunning place in which to be in transit as you move from an arrival flight to another departure flight. And it's got all the normal shopping fripperies and the things that can be a distraction once your aircraft has landed and you want something else to do whilst waiting for the outbound flight. But it has its own library. It has a beautiful rest area with reclining chairs, a good display of books in multiple languages and plentiful work areas. But it's obviously a place of tranquility and peace and quiet for the introverts who just want to get away from the crowds, find themselves a good space in the library. Maybe they can get on with some journaling. Maybe they can catch up with emails and just quietly be productive in those two or three hours whilst they're in transit. So in a short period of time, I've enjoyed an airport library, Bradford City Library, the public library by the Mirrorpool, 
and of course which also features in the dastardly goings on that take place in this book One Way Out by A.A. A. Dand and then I've been to my third library the Leeds Library in the centre of town not far away it's not luck that will put you in a space where you can do more of your writing where you can push the words forward as my friend Tish Bouvier likes to say and I love that phrase where you can push the words forward on your project you have to make time for these things put them in your diary say that you'll be going to this coffee shop for an hour and a half or that in two days time or perhaps on a Saturday morning you'll be going to the public library and your intention is to work through some specific chapters of a project that's currently on your desk and needs completing I know for example that later this afternoon I'll leave the house walk into town and go to a joint place which is both artisanal bakery and a coffee shop it's called left terrace in the center of bradford i'll be going there to work through the final three chapters of a book that i have been working on for several months but i know that if i finish chapters 10 11 and 12 that book is finally ready and i can print it and publish it this month the cover work was done by my friend helen several months ago and i've stalled on finishing it because I knew I had to go through and do what I think is my third read through of the printed version of the manuscript. The majority of it was finished before I got on the plane and it's been on the back burner these first couple of weeks but I can finish that this afternoon and know that I have actually done the work necessary to say as far as I can see I can't find any grammar errors. I think all the font styles are correct I've put in the bullet points, I've put in the further consideration section of each chapter, I've put in a case study with an individual related to the theme of that particular chapter, and I've written the 14th section of that book, which is the moving forward or good luck with your journey aspect of that particular non-fiction book. So by going to a coffee shop where I know I can be productive and putting that in my diary, I'll be able to grab a red pen later on tonight and say yes that project is done it's ticked off I've finished it now all I need to do is upload it to a formatting platform and send it into the KDP pages for publication the next projects of course and there are multiple projects are in my pocket notebook ready for action ready for review and consideration and of course, part of that is a reference to the new subject of AI learning, prompt engineering, as it's called, giving instruction to the software to further refine what your output will be by putting in good, intelligent, thoughtful consideration and direction to what is purely software. And of course, a huge part of what's important about putting things in your diary or your notebook or your pocket journal is that you keep yourself on track to move forward on those projects which give meaning to your life, which motivate you, and that give you that sense of, I'm on track, I'm doing what matters, I'm doing what creates my happiness. This is meaningful work. This is the process by which you put yourself in a better place through connecting with the activity which matters so much to you. Don't hold back from doing the things and putting those things in your diary which cause you to be productive and happy and to give you that motivation to know you are engaged with meaningful work and doing what matters so much for you. Wherever you are in the world, be productive, be creative, doing the things which matter to you.